Well, hello there, folks, and welcome back to The Whiskey Friend with me, Alan. Here we are again, another new week, another new video, another brand new video. In today's brand new video, we're tackling cast strength whiskies, five cast strength whiskies to be precise. Five cast strength whiskies I've picked up recently, either in the last couple of months. Uh, I have reviewed a couple of them in the past. Uh, I will pop links above to both of those, and I have got a few that I've still got to review in 2023. So if you're a cast strength lover, sit back. Strap yourself in, pour yourself a cast strength whiskey. As you'll probably notice, guys, I do have a pour here. I will save that to the very end. So if you're happy to hang around to the end, it is one of the whiskies that I'm going to tackle today. So if you want to try and guess which one it is, feel free. If you want to engage in the conversation, dive into the comments, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts on cast strength whiskies. Yes, I can hear you banging at the screen. We have whatever device you're on, there's going to be whiskies here that that should be on the list, and whiskies here that are not on the list. But these are just five whiskies that is that is sitting on the whiskey friend shelf at the minute and looking forward to in 2023. Dive into the comments, guys, and let me know what should be on the list, what I've missed off the list, or if you think I'm talking rubbish with the list, please feel free, dive in. Should they be on your bar? Are they on your bar? Why are they not on your bar? Let's find out. Okay, folks, thanks for coming back. Welcome back. Thanks for hanging in there. No messing around. I'm just going to dive straight into the first one. So the first one, I'm heading up to the Spring Bank of Speyside. You may have seen this bottle in the past because I have reviewed it before. This is the beautiful Ben Romack Cast Strength. This was distilled in 2009. It's the Batch 1, and it's coming in at a whopping 58.8% ABV. Yes, we we know the, the story with Ben Romack. We know what we would wish from Ben Romack. We'd love it to be natural colour. We'd love it to be chill filtered. But guys, it does not affect this whiskey in the slightest. And this is why I think Ben Romack are in no mood to change it. Because it seems to be working. So, yeah, Ben Romack, what's this whiskey all about? 58.8% ABV. First fill sherry and bourbon casks. It is... It's on the nose, it's light, it's fruity, it's it's fresh fruit, it's dried fruit, it's red fruit. It's got a little bit of nuttiness to it, it's got a lovely nutty character. It's it's smoky, it's got a smoky backbone through it, it's, and it's slightly musty on the nose. So it's a little bit musty, a little bit funky, hence why it's the spring bank of Speyside. So on the palate is creamy, it's, it's a little bit dirty. So if you like your dirty whiskies, this Ben Romack is right up your street. It's jammy, it's sticky, it's spicy, it's smoky, it's fruity. It's a little bit of red fruit, a little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of strawberry note coming into me from time to time. It's actually got, with that spiciness, it's actually got a spicy barbecued sauce note to it as well. So it's a little bit spicy, it's a little bit funky. On the finish, it's a little bit dry, it's a little bit bitter. It's long lasting. It's got lots and lots, that nutty character carries through, the smoke carries through. But yeah, it's a little bit spicy and a little bit, a little bit bitter and a little bit dry. But other than that, guys, it's fantastic. This whiskey, um, it's fifty eight point eight percent ABV. It drinks like fifty percent ABV, so this could be a real dangerous cast strength whiskey. It, I love the power. I love the complexity. I love the. It's got a great balance between the the, the peat, the smoke, the spice, and the wood, and that fruity spicy character. Just balances in wonderful. Great job, Ben Romack. Okay, folks, the next one on the list. We're heading to... Back still on Speyside. We're heading to Glen Morey. The Glen Morey Distillery up there in Speyside. This is the Glen Morey Cash Strength Manzanilla Finish. It's the Warehouse 1 bottle. It's coming in at 54.6% ABV. It's natural colour and it's non-chill filtered natural cash strength. So it was distilled for you geeks. It was distilled on the eighth of February, two thousand and eight. There was twelve hundred and bought twelve hundred and forty bottles available, and unfortunately, guys, it's a UK exclusive. So if you're outside the UK and you want to try and pick one of these up, you might need to get a mule on there helping you out. You might need to get your 
might need to get a wee bit searching for that. You might need to try and dig one of them up. But yeah, so this whiskey, guys, I've not tried this whiskey. I've just recently picked it up. It retails at £75 at the minute. I managed, I was really, really lucky. I picked this one up at auction this month and I managed to get it for £50. So I've got a cracking deal on that one. So sometimes it might be worth trailing the auction sites, even for current retail bottles that are out at the minute. Some of them are really dropping below retail prices which is great because it means the flippers are getting savaged and they're getting gouged by us because we're picking up these bottles at 50 quid instead of paying 75. As I say, it's 54.6% ABV. I don't know why I've not done more in this distillery. I've got a few bottles back in the cupboards. I've got a few open, I've got a few closed. But I'm going to just read off the bottle of the box of this one in a minute because I've not tried it. I've not even had a sample of it. But the nose, off the tasting notes off the box, and I know, yes, we're not always going to go by these, but initially soft, evoking sweet ripe pears, green apples, fresh cut grass, lively and vibrant, with background hints of chamomile tea. Sounds wonderful. The palate is notes of clean fruit are soon enveloped by, and, and eventually give way to a drier oak, spices, a luxurious mouthfeel entices you back for more where you find some of the herbal tea-like characteristics that were present on the nose. And they finish its long, lingering, savoury, almost salty flavours as expected from Manzanillo. So yeah, so that's what it tells me on the box, guys. I'm going to review this one pretty soon, so watch this space. It will come up pretty, pretty soon. So this one, as I say, I've visited the distillery a couple of times i've picked up a couple of handful bottles the prices are very very competitive guys you'll never find one of these bottles that, that push the bank some of these special ones are just creeping up into that little higher echelon to the price bracket but in general glenn Murray, you can usually pick them up pretty quick pretty cheaply so other than that guys that's the glenn Murray warehouse one manzanilla finish well done glenn Murray. okay folks next one up we're sticking on Speyside, just to let you know, this is the last one on Speyside, guys. But if you're a, a regular to the channel, this won't surprise you. It's the beloved Glenallachie 10 Cash Strength. This is the Batch 8 version. I have got all batches of it. I'm a Glenallachie fanboy. Uh, this is, I can't believe we're at Batch 8 already. Billy really seems to be knocking these bottles out. This one's coming in at 57.2% ABV. It's natural colour and there's uh, non-chill filtered. So as usual, Billy Walker's great at doing all these kind of things. This one, guys, if you're a Glen Allerkey fan and you're a Glen Allerkey 10 fan, I don't think there's any surprises in this one. I think the cask maturation is exactly the same as... Well, not exactly the same, but it's the same casks. It is PX and all the Rosal Punchins. It is a bit of Rioja and a bit of Virgin Oak casks. So that's the kind of makeup in 5, 6, 7 and 8. Have all been of a similar makeup. So, yes, they do vary from batch to batch. Cask will give you a wee bit more influence. I don't know what levels of Rioja they're putting in. I don't know if they're messing with the numbers that way. But uh, all in all, it's pretty much the same as, same as. It's it's a sherry bomb. It's rich. It's fruity. It's dark fruit. It's ripe, rich, booze soaked raisins. It's sultanas. It's coffee. It's chocolate. It's toffee. It's honey. It's that beautiful, beautiful orange marmalade notes in there. It's sticky, it's jammy. The spices are there, the nutmeg and the cinnamon. All of that stuff, the dry oak, the woody characters there, the, the sweet fruitiness on the finish, the long, spicy Christmas cake finish, the orange citrus is there, the vanilla's there. Everything that you'd expect from a Glenallachie 10 cast strength is still here again. Uh, if you would like me to compare, the, I think the batches, how I'm enjoying this, as you can see, I've got through quite a bit of this one. So this one compared to the others, five and six I thought were a little bit better. Seven was a wee bit, I think this is slightly better than seven, not as good as five and six. Four was spectacular. So these, if my favourite, and I'm, I'm looking forward, by the time I get down there though, this could all change. This could become the best Glenallachie. Because I always find Glenallachie tends to get better as it goes down the bottle. So as I'm getting halfway down here now, it should start to take take shape. I have reviewed it. I will pop a link above if you want to go back and watch the full review. 
So, that's the Glen Allocky. 10 cash strength, batch 8. Well done, Glen Allocky. Let's move on. So, next one up, folks. We're heading over to Campbelltown. Not Springbank. We're heading to Kilcairn. And this one, it's another batch. You have seen them before. I have done lots of them on the channel. This is the batch 7. Kilcairn, heavily peated. I'm amazed we're up to the batch 7 already. This is the batch 7 of the Peat in Progress, which is the heavily peated range at Kilcairn. Uh, again, guys, it's there's not a lot to say. It's the usual. It's Kilcairn. I've not actually opened this one yet, as you can see, but I've tried lots of samples at it. I've tried it at the whiskey festivals. I've tried it everywhere. It is. It's a wonderful, fabulous... Is it as good as some of the others? Yeah, that's open to opinion. Some people will like the batch 4 and 5. Some people will like 6. Some people will love 7. So that, again, it's a matter of taste. For me, they're pretty much the same and same as for me. I think 4 and 5 were, were particularly lovely. Uh, this one, I think, is getting a little bit more. I think there's a wee bit more sherry. It's a little bit darker. I think there's a wee bit more sherry coming into that. So I think as I get through this bottle... I think I will, I will come to love this one. Some of the others were a wee bit more bourbon driven. Uh, very lemony, very lime and lemon, very citrus. This is pretty much the same, guys, but this is this is much more what I can remember from the samples I had. It's fresh, it's intense. There's some pine needles there. It's wet peat. It's very mineral. That lemon's there. It's smoky and it's honey on, this, on this, the, the nose. And as you get into it, it's oily, it's creamy, it's thick. Wonderfully mouth coating. Some nice berry fruit in there. I think that's coming for the sherry this time, which is a wee bit different to the last ones. So I think there's some nice red berries in there. It's nutty. It's very, very nutty. The lemon citrus is there as usual. Even a little bit of orange in there as well. Maybe even a little bit of lime. But lots and lots of smoke. As you get into the finish, it's long, it's spicy, it's ashy. That lemon has become a wee bit more grapefruit. So a wee bit, a wee bit more, maybe a little bit bitter on the finish as well absolutely wonderful so batch seven i'll have popped videos before guys i'll try and pop some links above batch four and six were my favorite so far of the range well to date they're the best however everyone's taste is different as i said guys but i'm looking forward to smashing into this batch seven can't wait i will review it watch this space well done kill karen let's move on so my goodness, we are smashing through these five. We're at five already. If you're a regular to the channel, guys, again, this might not be a surprise. This was the Whiskey Friend Whiskey of the Year. It's the wonderful, wonderful Buna Haben 12 Cash Strength 2022. Sherried, spicy, and unpeated. Wow, wonderful. Small batch, 2022 edition. No added colour, non-chill filtered. Whopping 56.6% ABV. Well done, Buna Haben. I'm loving this whiskey. If you've watched the review, if you've not watched it, I'll pop a link above, guys. But yeah, whiskey of the year. It came in very, very quick. I almost never picked this bottle up, guys, because the batch one, I was a little bit initially enjoyed it. Got a little bit disappointed with it as I went through, and I didn't plan to pick up the batch two. But... I was talked into it. I was convinced to buy it. As soon as I went on a bottle share, I smashed that bottle share and that half a bottle in probably less than a week. Went out and I've picked up a couple since. So this one again, guys, on the nose, it's so sweet. It's it's sherry. It's sherry forward. It's sherry driven. It's sherry casks. It's it's dark. It's fruity. It's There's some lovely vanilla in there. There's caramels. There's toffee. A little bit of milk chocolate on the nose. Those booze soaked raisins are there again. The dark fruit, the dried fruit, all of that stuff you'd expect from the sherry. Rum and raisin, rum and raisin ice cream. It's orangey, it's salty. It's all, this is just wonderful, wonderful stuff. The usual Buna 12 nuttiness is there as well. And sometimes you pick up a little bit of tropical fruit, maybe a little bit of pineapple, peach or mango, stuff like that. As you get into the palate, it becomes darker. Beautiful, and the alcohol integration is wonderful. It's it's boozy, it's punchy, it's 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 sticky, it's dried fruit, it's Christmas cake. It's all those beautiful, beautiful sherry stuff that you like. The milk chocolate has become dark chocolate. 
and it's very very spicy and there's a little bit of white pepper in there as well onto the finish it's long it's lingering it's lasting it's wonderful wonderful stuff probably the best whiskey in fact it was the best core range whiskey that i tried in 2022 hence it was the whiskey of the year it was just slightly better than my saying slightly better for me is a good two or three points higher than the batch one um so all in all with that well done buna haben okay folks i can't believe i smashed through them so quick five wonderful cast strength whiskies in my opinion They've recently been added to the bar. They've recently been replaced on the bar. And I'm looking forward to getting into these in 2023. I have reviewed a couple of them as I see I have pop links above. I will look at, there's a couple I've still got to review. I've still got the Kilkerran to do. I've still got the Glen Murray to do. And I will redo, I think I will redo the Ben Romack because it's been a while since I've done that one. And it's a new bottling. So watch this space guys and look out for them. Are these whiskies on your bar? I'm a, guys, are they not on your bar? Why are they not on your bar, guys? Drop into the comments. Tell me why they're not on your bar. Should they be on your bar? I think they should be on everyone's bar. Particularly if you like cast iron whiskies. There's a bit there for everyone. There's a bit of smoke, a bit of peat, a bit of sherry. A bit of bourbon cast, a bit of everything going on there. So there's a few little, nice little mix going on. But yeah, you're probably wondering, guys, what I've got in my glass. Thank you very much if you've hung on and waited. Being patient. Thank you very much. I did state that I hadn't tried the Glen Moray, the Manzanilla, so I thought, why not? I've took the opportunity, I've opened it up and I've poured it, and it's been sitting in the glass for a while. I'm just going to give you a quick overview as I see I will review this one coming up. 54.6% ABV, non-chill filter, natural colour. Nose, yes, it's bright, it's fresh, it's clean. Very, very fruity. Typical Speyside. Lots of apples, lots of pears. Cooked pears, maybe. Fresh apple. A little bit grassy, but it say, I think it says on the note that it was fresh cut grass. I think it's just more, it's just, I think for me, it's just cut grass. Maybe a bit of hay going on. Some nice, lovely, nice soft baking spices. A bit of cinnamon, a bit of clove. Can't really pick up the tea, but let me, let me dive into the palette. Wow, that's different. Comes in dry, fruity, spicy. Then, very, very quickly becomes really mouth coating, mouth watering. Spicy, sticky, even maybe even a little bit, a little bit sherbety, a little bit fizzy. It's got a real nice texture to it. The apples are there, the pear, the fruits are out, the fruits there. A little bit spicy, so it's spicy fruit. Heading to the finish. Yes, it becomes a wee bit savoury, as it says on the note. Savoury, salty, that, that's definitely there. And I think I pick up a little bit of tea on the finish. But it's spicy. It's got a beautiful, it's not as, it's much, much sweeter on the nose and on the initial with the palate. But heading to the finish, the sweetness dries away and it comes becomes much more savoury. All in all, fantastic whiskey. Looking forward to reviewing that one. So guys... Five cast strength whiskies, five crackers, five belters, five bangers. Dive in, let me know. If you've liked the video, guys, give me a thumbs up. If you've not hit the button yet, what you're waiting for, it's just down here. Big red thing. Just a friendly reminder from me to thee, it still doesn't cost you anything, still completely free, and you're still helping the channel massively on its way to the magical 7K. I'm Alan. Until the next one, I'm the whiskey friend. As I always say, the pleasures and the sharing. Don't forget to send some good whiskey straight down the hatch. Responsibly, of course. See you in the next one, folks.